Welcome to the Canes Insight Podcast powered by Anajar and Levine. Miami has a new big time commitment. Midwest Mario strikes again. Brock shot blue chip tight end out of Indiana. We're going to talk all about this commit. It is a huge one. It's one we've been monitoring for a while. Really jacked up about it. We'll watch his film. We will break him down. Thank you to Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys. If you've been injured in an accident, someone you care about has been injured in an accident, reach out to the absolute best. The tops in Florida, Anna Jar and Levine, 1-800-747-FREE, 1-800-747-3733. Take back control of your life with the blue chip attorneys, Anna Jar and Levine. Blue chip commitment for Miami, though. Pete, I know you're jacked up. Yeah, no, I mean, this is a, an awesome guy to pair with Luca Gilbert, who recently committed. And D, you've been all over this one. Mentioned him a few weeks ago in the bank and on the Canes Insight Daily podcast, right? Always bringing the hottest and newest recruiting information. I'll pull up the post right here. But again, you've been all over this one. What's Miami getting in Brock shot here? Yeah, and that's why you follow the Canes Insight Podcast. That's why you like and subscribe. That's why you're on the Canes Insight Forums all free. Uh, two weeks before the crystal ball started rolling in, we told you we expected Brock shot to be a Miami Hurricane. Miami has prioritized this player, put him at the absolute premium class of recruits, and they've made him feel like a priority. No one makes recruits feel like a priority like Mario Cristobal because when he wants somebody, he lets them know he wants them and he gets them. He doesn't target everybody like that only targets big time players. But then once the recruit is identified as a premium player, he is absolutely relentless. Brock shots in that category. First name is appropriate because he's similar in a lot of ways to Brock Bowers, the tight end who's going to go first round from the Georgia Bulldogs. 6'3", 215 for Brock shot. Not the biggest tight end in the world as far as height, but what he brings is just an offensive weapon. You watch him on film. He is catching screens, taking him to the house. He's running routes, running by guys, making catches in traffic. Just an absolute football player. He can make plays after the catch. You look at the production, 35 balls, 743 yards, six touchdowns on offense out of Leo, Indiana. Town of less than 4,000 people. This is rural Indiana. And Morrow's going in there and landing a blue chip player. Notre Dame, the local school, recruited him on defense for linebacker. And look at him on defense, 67 tackles, 32 tackles for loss, 19 sacks. He is somebody who brings a complete skill set to the uh, to the table, as you can see as you watch his film. Uh, so I think the football player is so versatile, tough, athletic, and you really just you forget it. You say, okay, 6'6", 250, that's a prototypical tight end. Don't tell me about the prototype. Tell me what this player can do. He can catch, he can run, he can run routes. He's extremely tough. He's a natural player on defense and offense with instincts, and he's extremely productive. Similar to Elijah Lofton, who Miami took despite not being the tallest guy. This is someone who does have good size. When you look at a receiver, you know, if you line him up wide, 6'3, 215, he's going to get much bigger than that. He's got plenty of size to line up wide. And when you use him in different spots, he will have more than enough size to go along with the toughness and the instincts. Similar to Elijah Lofton. Las Vegas, four-star, not the tallest tight end, but someone who might have been the best player in this class. So, Pete, uh, you know, you've been around the NFL draft and you've seen a lot of players. What do you see when you see Elijah, uh, sorry, Brock, Brock shot on film? Well, I see it, especially the defensive highlights that really sticks out to me. His he's using his hands really well at that age, at that, you know, at, at this juncture of his career. And I think that's going to translate very well to the tight end position. Obviously, he's going to be doing a lot of blocking there, but the athleticism at that size, I mean, they're, they're playing him out wide here. As, as we see, he's making, making really nice, you know, catches at, at the highest point. Uh, and then we see him here too, getting, getting his nose dirty there blocking as well, which we see with a Luca Gilbert as well, who recently committed to Miami, but this is your modern tight end who, you know, can can do a little bit of everything, but obviously brings that receiving threat in a big way. We keep talking, though, about these premium football players that Mario and staff continue to bring in. Is this this player out here another another defensive play from him? Right. So really just a special player. And I think he's a guy who's going to pair very nicely with Luca Gilbert. Yeah, I meant, you know, last year I said Elijah Lott is my favorite player in the in the class. Brock shot, it's early, but he's one of my favorite players in the class, just the way he plays the game. Pete mentioned Luca Gilbert, the tight end from Ohio, another blue chip four-star who committed to Miami. Luca Gilbert had a visit schedule to Ohio State. 
commits to Miami. Brock Schott had a visit to Ohio State schedule, commits to Miami. Miami's getting guys from the Midwest. And why is Miami so focused on the Midwest? Well, look at the trend of the guys they've gotten. Justin Scott, the five-star, basketball player, great size, very versatile defensive tackle. Luca Gilbert, 6'7", 245. These guys are big. They are athletic. They play basketball, and they're tough. Brock Schott, also a basketball player. PQ, Brock Schott's basketball highlights, so you can see what he can do on the court. Uh, Nathaniel Marshall, who's coming in on visit to Miami, who has defensive tackle size, also a basketball and that's really the trend. Miami also landed Marquise Lightfoot last year, another five-star out of Chicago. So they're really prioritizing the Midwest because you got big guys that are great athletes, that play multiple sports, that are tough, that are well-coached, and can do a lot of things. That's what Brock Schott brings to the table. Again, you have your 6'7", 245 inline guy with Luca Gilbert. Brock Schott gives you somebody who can move around, play him out wide, play him in the backfield, play him as an H-back, play him in line if you need to, play him on special teams because you know he's going to run down there and bust somebody up watching his defensive highlights, and then you see the basketball athleticism. So Brock Schott to me, we need more football players. That's a cliche. What does a football player mean? Everybody says it. To me, it means versatility. You can put him at multiple spots and he knows what to do. Instincts goes hand-in-hand -hand with versatility. Toughness. You're not tough. You're not a football player. Proc shot is a, obviously tough. Again, Notre Dame won them as a linebacker. And, um, you know, that's what Miami – and the passion, really the passion for the game, which, again, Brock shot brings to the table. And really, to me, a courageous guy. To go from a town of 4,000 all the way to Miami to play football, that's unusual. Um, and that's something that you saw when Miami was dominant. They'd get guys from all over the place, weird places, that had a passion for the University of Miami that came down and did their thing, not just South Florida guys. I love South Florida guys more than anybody, but you would sprinkle in guys like Brock Schott from different parts of the country that are just tough, nasty, talented football players that have a passion for the University of Miami, and that's Brock Schott. So the, I, something I, I, I notice here in the basketball highlights too is a lot of them are steals, blocks. That's a lot of what he has on his huddle, and a lot of times with these tight ends, with these basketball players, you're expecting them to be, you know, going down the lane for, for an easy fast break jam, see him jumping all over the place, right? But that's – you're looking at a guy here who, again, playing tight end, it's a, a position now that there is there is a little bit of flair to it, and he's going to get the ball in his hands and be able to, to show, show, show his ability off. But he still has that – you know, he's a tough-minded guy, and what he's showing off in his highlights here are steals and blocks – and that's that's interesting to me. It's not just the uh, the points that are being scored. Yeah, well, he's a high motor guy. He's physical. He does what he needs to do to win. We need guys like that at the University of Miami. Again, it's a cliche, but that's what you want. Now, look, Brock Schott's also a four star player. Don't get it twisted. This is a four star player recruited by Ohio State, recruited by Notre Dame, recruited by a lot of top schools. So, when you get blue chip players, Luca Gilbert, another four star player, the tight end from Ohio, to pair with Brock Schott. When you get blue chip players that have that blue collar mentality, that's what you want. You want talented guys that work hard, that will do what it takes to for the team. Luca Gilbert, again, who who's getting paired with Brock Shot. You watch his highlights. Even though he's a basketball player, even though he's highly athletic, great catch radius, hands catcher, he is blocking most of the time and he's burying guys, sending him to the sideline, 6'7, 245. So that kind of versatility, that kind of willingness to support the team. Brock shot again, not just a pass catcher, he plays defense also. That's what this is going to be built on. D, so again, sorry to it, cut you off, but as I'm watching these highlights here too, the other thing that's interesting is the way he's used in his offense is they're already kind of using him the way you'd project him to be used at the next level. They're throwing him tight end screens. They're letting him get vertical. They're putting him in the slot and getting underneath. So it's very interesting that a lot of guys at the high school level, they're just doing one thing or two, two things that that's what the team needs them to do, right? Obviously, he's playing both ways, but you got to give some credit to the, the staff over there at, at his school, at, at Leo High School in, in Leo, Indiana, because the way they're using him seems like he's going to be a guy who's going to come in ready with an understanding that, you know, as a tight end, you've got to do a whole bunch of different things. Yeah, and good year in Indiana, by the way. I'm looking at it. There's there's four top 247 prospects 
Um, there's Marion Dye, who's not rated in that top 247, who Miami just had on campus and absolutely loves as a defensive end, a guy with big time offers. So there's talent in Indiana this year, um, with Brock Schott being pr- probably the best offensive player in the state. Miami's able to go and get him out of the Big Ten, bring him down to Miami, and that is just a major, major win. And again, personally, one of my favorite players in the class reminds me a lot of Elijah Lofton, who was the best player in spring practice out of that recruiting class here in 2024. So excited about what's happening in Miami. You look at the recruiting class, you got Brock Schott committed a tight end, Luca Gilbert committed a tight end. You got a uh, Luke nickel throw in the passes. You got a lot of nice pieces on offense as you build this class and the Midwest invasion is only going to continue with Mario Cristobal at head coach, targeting that area, getting guys out of the cold, getting them down to South Florida, where they'll bring that toughness to the tropical environment. So listen, like, and subscribe to this podcast, sign up for the canesinsight.com free forums. People are going crazy over this commit. That thread is already popping with GIFs, with booty shaking, with all kinds of (laughs) of images to celebrate this great commitment. Nowhere is more active than the canesinsight.com forums. Canes Inside Podcast, we'll keep giving it to you. And if you want to hear about things like Brock Shot being a cane two weeks in advance, subscribe here, sign up for the for the forums, and stick with canesinsight.com. See you soon.